This is the new Ari Orbiter LED fixture. Cinema 5D at IBC 2019 is brought to you by b &H, the professional source for all your video needs. CVP, the leading specialist in creative cine, video and photo solutions. Music Vine, beautifully produced music for film and video. Manfrotto, imagine more. And Fujinon, ultimate optical performance. Hi, this is Nino from Cinema 5D. We're here at IBC 2019 at the ARI booth. Uh, we're here with Florian. How are you? Oh, great. Thank you very much. <laughs> you just introduced a new light just before IBC, the Orbiter. Uh, what can you tell me about this one? Uh, the first thing I can tell you about it, it's not a light. Uh, it it's with a camera. It doesn't <laughs> look like one. Oh, what I can tell you, we announced it as an ARI lighting keynote. Okay. Uh, there were a couple of people really thinking that it's going to be a new Mini or Mini LF or Mini LF whatever, uh, because of the front view, which we, like a teaser, you know, placed yeah. into uh, giving the place. We saw that. You wouldn't give us the information beforehand, but yeah. I, <laughs> actually, it's a true Harley that I know about it, yeah. Um, no, but um, it, again, it's more than just a light source, because of the way we built it in the, in the idea to change going from one fixture, or staying with one fixture, but going in terms of changing into different lights. So that being able and the basis of that is a new point light source. So we changed the LED in a way, the LED arrangement, that we can create a light engine, it's called RE Spectra, uh, which is very, very small, as a minimum of the, uh, in terms of aperture, very close to what you think of a 2K tungsten filament. And with that we can control the light in very different ways. And therefore we could uh, come up with open face, so hard shadows, can even go harder for pristine uh, field and illumination uh, with projection optics. But we also go all the way to soft lights. We have omnidirectional domes, and we, of course, we have the standard soft lights, uh, soft banks, and light boxes, and also octagon shade. And this we all do without additional optical accessories. So all you do is you change the optic, or then you add with the, uh, we have an adapter for the other. Uh, as, uh, accessories and you do that without anything in between because we have a point light source. And, and how did you, I mean you, you're using a different type of LED lighting that others are using, right? Or how do you achieve that? It's correct. First of all, you have to have the right people for it, I have to say that. And we have very smart engineers with a lot long history and a long enough experience and know-how in creating light engines. So we at Ari, we create our light engines on our own. We don't have suppliers for that. We select the LEDs per se in the way that they match each other in the best way to achieve the highest in color rendition what is possible. Mm -hmm. And if you do that and you can combine it with a very smart and clever way to cool it because cooling is essential for LEDs, then you can create a small light source which is extremely powerful, really bright and great in terms of color rendition. But again, this is, you need the right components for that, so this was a long way, and this is mandatory to have that. And actually, yes, it's true, we use LEDs, nobody else uses it in the industry, so we have exclusively. What about output of this light? How much light do you get out of it? It's a very interesting question a lot of people ask, and it's a very difficult to answer that. First of all, as we have so many different possibilities in terms of optical accessories and the optics, it very much depends which kind of optic you use. Per se, it comes as an open face. So to which kind of luminaire I like to compare an open face? Due to the beauty of the field of light, you don't need any diffusion in front of it. So whatever you use normally an open face for, and you need a lot of diffusion or uh, lenses in addition to it, you don't need it with this one. And it has an integrated power supply, so it doesn't come up like an HMR with a ballast. And if you take that in consideration, it is difficult really to make a one-by-one -one comparison. But I want, because the question comes a lot, I would like to give you um, three kind of answers. First of all, it's much brighter than a 2K tungsten, referring to Fresnel, although it's not a Fresnel, but the people like yeah. to compare. So let's take a 2K Fresnel, it's much brighter than a 2K Fresnel. It also exceeds what the L10, which is also a 400 watt fully kind of, uh, tunable um, light source. So it ex exceeds by far what the L10 offers you. And as last technology, HMI, if you really consider it as a system, because you have the ballast 
Yeah? You have, of course, the light, you have optical uh, elements in front of it. It's really sim much similar to what is a Pocket Power 400 or I may name here also a non ari light because it's quite famous, like a Joker Buck 400 as well. But again, please keep in mind, it's fully, fully tunable. You can run all colors you like to. So you don't kill light. Once you do a color correction or a gel, yeah, you create the light. And if we just consider that a little bit, it outruns and overperforms all the other three which I just named by far. Uh, what is a typical application that you would see where, I mean, it's a very versatile light, we heard that, but um, what, is a, what is something you couldn't do with another light that's already there? I would put it this way, you couldn't change that from one going one fixture into many lights. While we are shooting a showreel, we turned it all of a sudden from a projection optics to an omnidirectional light source. So it was totally different. And also the team, when they thought about, okay, we need to change the lights. And they said, no, no, we just changed the optics. And that's all they had to do. And this is something with a, which I think is really unique. So with all the flexibility uh, which we created already in and onto the sky panel, we moved it one step further. We could really change it into many different lights, actually. And saying that, and yes, have the versatility in mind, we believe very much that it gives you so much opportunities for a, used, um, a huge area of application. Of course, motion picture, you know, with all the cameras, the camera system which we have in place, with all other lights. So motion picture is somehow in the DNA of Ari, especially coming from the two founders, cameramans. But there is more. We, have, we do a lot of things in studio, in media. So broadcast is a very central part. But now with the uh, Orbiter, with the great new dimming, uh, techniques which we uh, integrated in, especially with projection, we believe that theater and also live entertainment could be really be a, a new application or for us a stronger application which we uh, get back into. Um, and another one which we already with Skype and LLC is do a good job, but now going to be stronger, is photo and video. So continuous light due to the advantages of LEDs, um, so for instance, you know, food it's very interesting, but also then of course for fashion. And with continuous light sources, what we do, it's possible to change in a modern way and to accelerate the workflow on photo video. Yeah? You see, it's difficult to get a hand on the product right now during uh, the show. That's why we shoot the interview here on one of the last days, because your yeah. booth is always very busy here at the entrance as well. Yeah. Thank you <laughs> for considering. Yeah. I just need to have a hand on the luminaire, otherwise people would try to steal it away. <laughs> yeah. No, oh, great. All right, so um, what about pricing and availability of this light? When can people buy it? Okay. Uh, actually, we are happy to get orders. Okay. Um, honestly, we have already received some very good feedback, very well, uh, much interest, but it will take some time. What we have here are uh, prototypes. They are already great, but they have to go the last step, and the engineers work day and night to do that. We expect the start of, ship, uh, start of production, sorry, by Q1 next year. We will have later this year, we will have de more demo samples out because we like to have people getting the hands on. Mm -hmm. uh, the, their feedback to us is extremely valuable. A lot of those things we have created already in the, the sky panel, but we built in here, as of course coming from the user, you know, what the user expects from us, you know, with something like effects or special modes and how they want to tweak it a little bit more in this and this direction. So we rely on feedback and we like to integrate it and be as good as possible from day one. Though it takes a little bit of time. And in terms of pricing, actually there are huge differences depending on what kind of combination you're looking for. For instance, and you may follow that, the standard package will be with an open face. We have three different open faces, 50, 30, 60 degrees, but we all have also have three projection optics. But the projection optics is a total piece uh, of equipment coming up with lenses, high quality lenses, coated lenses, and that is by far the more expensive than an open face. So we will have a range and 
In this case, uh, the local dealer has all the information already, and we will be will get more to the final pricing till end of the year. Well, we have a rough pricing already, but again, the local dealers yeah. is the best source of information in that sense. Somebody else, somebody else trying to steal it. Yeah, I know, uh, I know, I know. We, we, just a just a general question uh, out of interest. The I mean, do you think that all the First of all, do you think all lighting is eventually going to move into LED? And second part of the question, is all the LED lighting moving into RGBW? No and no. Um, it also depends to whom you talk. I would say people who have a lot of experience and uh, worked for years or even decades with so-called conventional light sources, although I think a 60,000 volt ignition process is not so conventional, but nevertheless, let's call it conventional for HMI discharge and of course tungsten. So they are used it, and a tungsten light source is a beautiful light source. Um, HMI, there are needs for it, and especially when you go to high output power, you know, we have up to 18,000 watt with the Arimax in LED. Ooh, I'm going to be interested how you deal with it. So, saying that, I believe for a long time, there is still a need for all those three technologies, for tungsten, for discharge, slash HMI, and of course LED as well. It depends on the use case. So if you go in for a modern studio and you go IP network, of course it's an LED light source because you want to have a digital system, fully understood. But if you want to have, um, work, you know, like for instance, there, there was one of the last um, uh, uh, films, Roger Deakins mm. uh, did, it was a, a great movie and he used 90% tungsten, at least this is what I'm told. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he used a rig of 150 RE 300 tungsten light sources to come up with a beautiful rig as, as well. It depends what you like, what the people like, what they feel confident about it. And we would like to supply them with the right tool. So anything you like to have, we'd like to provide them with it. And that goes all along from 150 watt in tungsten to 24,000 from 575 to 18,000 in HMI and with everything from an L5 to an L10 from all the sky panels including the 360 and of course now with the orbiter. And, and will all the RGB, uh, all the LEDs become RGB lights? Um, because that's what we're seeing, like everybody's re releasing RGB lights left and right and of course you've had the uh, sky panel for the longest time um, yeah and it's becoming, it seems to be becoming the standard for LED lighting. Actually, we started uh, with multi-channel light in 2008 mm. with a very small system, very extremely flexible system called PUX. By that time, it was too early in terms of you know the cost, yeah. stuff like that, and also the output. But it was great. It was already the, the basis for a lot of things like the shells, which we integrated later on, mm. and sky panel. But um, if you take the L, L series and sky panel, we mainly go multi-channel, so RGBW, fully tunability, is something which we believe in. So from our perspective, we won't go the way to uh, anything like remote phosphor. We have them still for sky panel, but everything new we do only uh, in multi-channel. Here we have six channels. We have RGB, amber, cyan and lime. For the rest of the industry, I also sense that most of the companies uh, heading towards the possibility of multi-channel uh, lights. But there are still a lot of uh, lights using um, or bicolor, for instance, warm white, cold white with remote phosphor. Mm -hmm. uh, and it depends a little bit on actually what you want to do. So I would never blame somebody who says, I believe in um, remote phosphor technology. And uh, if it's the right tool for your product, all the way. But our view to what a digital light source should do, it should give you the flexibility which is possible. And also with the idea of integrating a lot of sensors in terms of enhancing the user experience, the control over the product, but also later on about workflow and post-production, those things are possible with digital light sources. Relatively easy, so to say, if you do it in the right way. And with the maximum of flexibility, variability, and of course also in terms of application needs, we believe a fully tunable light source like Orbiter with, of course, a great balance of high output and great color fidelity is the right way to do it. All right. Thank you, Florian.
Thank you. A lot of information to digest for our uh, viewers, but it's a very interesting light. And uh, yeah, thanks everybody for watching. Stay tuned to Cinema 5D for a lot more from IBC 2019. And please subscribe to our YouTube channel.